A lot of my videos show off what these business line laptops are capable of, and within these videos I usually have an upgrade montage, but in that upgrade montage I do not show the upgrade process step by step in real time. Um, and that leaves a lot of questions for viewers, you know, how, how do I put the RAM in, how do I get access to the hard drive, you know, where, where can I add a secondary hard drive, is it possible to add a secondary hard drive on this laptop? So. I decided I'm going to start doing upgrade guides, step-by-step uh, -step upgrade guides, and mostly real-time if I don't mess up too badly. Uh, there might be a couple cuts in this video. And for our first victim, we have a Lenovo ThinkPad T400. And I've already made a video about this machine. These make great daily drivers just for basic office tasks and schoolwork, especially with the right upgrades, which we have right here. So what we're going to be doing today is adding 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 to the system, along with a Kingston 240 gigabyte solid state drive. And something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I'm surprised that I haven't actually tried this because I've been working on ThinkPads um, for a, a couple of years now, probably like four to five years we've been featuring ThinkPads on this channel. I have never used one of these uh, hard drive adapters. So basically, this allows you to add a secondary hard drive to the computer within a matter of seconds. So all you do is you yank out the DVD slash CD drive, you put the hard drive in here, like so, and then you just slide it into the side of the computer, and that gives you instant access to a secondary hard drive. And this is a Western Digital Scorpio Blue 250 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, this is just something I had laying in the closet. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going out and buying this drive because you can easily get a 500 gigabyte uh, 7200 RPM 2.5 inch hard drive for around $19. Now, I'll, I'll put a link to a Toshiba one that I found on Amazon uh, in the description. By the way, the link to all of the corresponding parts right here will be in the description. Uh, and that includes the link to the seller that I bought this T400 from. I bought this T400 for 34 bucks off eBay. So these things are just dirt cheap. And usually you can find one in really good condition. If you guys can tell, I mean this thing, I know the camera angle might be a little bit weird here, so I'm sorry about that, but this thing is clean. This is a really clean machine. And the Core 2 Duos in these machines are usually still good enough for, once again, basic office tasks and uh, schoolwork. Uh, so we're not going to worry about the processor right now. You can upgrade the processor in these laptops, but that's not something I'm going to touch on in this video. Now, that's not to say that a processor upgrade won't yield a performance increase. I guarantee you it will, but you're getting a lot more bang for your buck with the following upgrades we have here. Now, there's a couple more things I want to touch on before we get started. Um, this is a generic uh, no-name battery that I bought off Amazon. Uh, for 15 bucks. Now I do highly recommend going with a OEM Lenovo, uh, genuine Lenovo battery, but the thing is those are just so expensive. Uh, if you look the prices on eBay right now, they're around 40 to 50 bucks, and I don't know about you, but I just don't have the money for that, so we're gonna have to make do with this. Uh, these really don't hold up to the genuine Lenovo batteries though. Uh, the lifespan is a lot shorter and sometimes they cut out uh, really early, so not a huge fan of these kind of generic knockoff batteries, but you know, sometimes you just don't have a choice. So I'll put the link to this in the description, but once again, highly recommend going with a genuine Lenovo battery pack. Uh, in addition to that, we have a drive caddy because a lot of these computers that you buy off eBay will not ship with the drive caddy. Uh, and in this case, this one did not ship with the drive bake hover either. So I had to buy that as well. And you can get these uh, in a bundle for around five bucks, but they ship from China. So you have to order them way in advance. These usually take about a month um, to get over to the US if you're a US viewer. Um, and then I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and start taking this laptop apart and adding our upgrades in. And the only tool you're going to need to take this laptop apart is a single Phillips head screwdriver. So I'm gonna start with what is probably the most difficult upgrade, and it's not even hard, just compared to everything else, this is going to be uh, the most difficult upgrade, and it's gonna take us under five minutes, so it's actually really not that hard, but that upgrade is going to be adding uh, the eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM into the laptop. So we're gonna flip it over, and what we're gonna do now is remove four screws on the back. So there's gonna be one right next to the drive bay, another right here, one right here, and one all the way to the other side of the laptop. So with our Phillips head screwdriver, I'm just going to unscrew 
all four of these screws, and then the um, palm rest. That's what we're trying to get access to uh, under the palm rest because that's where the RAM is. The palm rest will just pop off after we re, uh, remove all of these. Give it a tap. And you can see that all four of those screws fell out. And, then, and we can now yank the uh, palm rest off. Let me move these off to the side. Put these somewhere where you're not going to lose them and they're not going to roll off the table. So with those screws removed, we can open the laptop. And this is the section we want to remove. Now during this step, you do have to be careful because there is a ribbon cable connecting all the hardware here um, to the rest of the laptop. So um, just make sure you don't rip it all out. You gotta be a little delicate here. So what we're gonna do is grab onto this corner of the plastic right here and kind of just pry the palm rest off. It's just held on by plastic clips at this point. So with that corner removed, Gonna grab under it and kind of work my way around with my hands. Once again, trying to be as delicate as possible. This one's not coming out. There we go. And that just kind of slides off like so. And you can see the ribbon cable right here. What you're gonna do is grab onto this little white tab and pull it straight up. And now we're just gonna move this off to the side. And you can see that now we have access to both of the RAM slots. And just the side note, this is also how you get access to the CMOS battery. So if your CMOS battery dies and needs to be replaced, it's the same procedure uh, to remove the palm rest. So we have our single stick of DDR3 RAM right here. This is a two gigabyte stick. I'm gonna pop it out by pulling these metal tabs out to the side. And now with both my hands, I can just kind of slide the RAM out and put the new RAM in. So I'm gonna put it in at an angle here, make sure it is firmly seated, give it a little push and push down and wait for it to snap in. Same thing with the other one, push in at an angle, make sure it's properly seated and push down until it goes below those metal pins or clips, sorry, those middle clips. And that's it. So we have eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM installed now, and now we just gotta go backwards and put everything back together. Everything else is going to be a breeze from here on out. Now we are going to install our secondary drive, but before we can do that, we have to remove the CD slash DVD drive. Um, and that's a two second process. Just pull this slider right here to the left. A little tab's gonna pop out, pull on it, and then yank the drive out. That's all it takes. Now we are going to install the hard drive into the uh, adapter we have right here. And this one does come with a screwdriver, which is awesome. So I'm just gonna take the screwdriver out. I'm gonna take the drive, slide it in. It is a tight fit, but it does fit. Um, now what we need to do is secure it into the um, adapter right here, because if you haven't noticed, if you flip it over, it will just kind of fall out. Um, so we can do that by adjusting two screws on the back, and this is going to be really difficult for you guys to see. Um, but there's a screw right here and a screw right here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just screw both these screws in until I feel a little bit of resistance. And I'm going to do the same for the other side. And now as you can see, that drive is not going anywhere. So I'm going to pop the screwdriver back in. So now, with that done and the drive installed, we can just slide it back in, give it a little push. Oh, whoa, it did not like that. Give me a sec. I've been messing around with this for 20 minutes because it turns out that this uh, hard drive adapter doesn't work perfectly with this T400. It does work, but it looks kind of ghetto because this plastic front uh, does not line up with the drive bay cut out on the T400. So as you can see, the plastic front is just one continuous rectangle. Um, and the drive bay uh, is a continuous rectangle up to here and then it gets smaller. So what I've done is I've just taken this plastic front off and it's easy to do. It's just held in by some plastic clips. So use a little bit of force and you just pry it right off uh, the front of the drive adapter. I also tried to take the original front from the uh, CD slash DVD ROM drive and put it uh, onto the front of the uh, hard drive adapter, but that didn't work. 
So what I would recommend is one, you could either do this and just take the front plastic panel off, which I don't like because it looks kind of ghetto. Um, or you could actually go on Amazon and buy one that's cut out correctly. And I'll see if I can find one um, that has the correct cutout and I'll put the link to it down in the description. So it does fit the shape of the, um, let me take this out. The shape of the adapter itself is correct, but the shape of the front panel that goes on it like that is not correct. So we can't use that front panel. Now our final boss is the solid state drive installation. Now I know we still have the battery left, but that's dead simple. Um, for the solid state drive, what we have here is the drive caddy, the two rubber side sliders, um, and three drive screws. This did come with four, but I needed one for the hard drive uh, bay cover because for some reason this one did not come with a screw. So we're just going to cannibalize it from the hard drive caddy, and this, this will be fine with only uh, three screws. So what you're going to do is take your drive, be it a solid state drive or a traditional hard drive, you're going to put it face up into the tray, and you want to make sure the connectors are facing out towards the side uh, with the cutout. Now all you have to do from here is secure the drive with your screws. And in this case, we only have three. And this is where your Phillips head screwdriver is going to come back into play. And we're going to add those rubber side sliders on. And these make a nice tight fit for the uh, drive caddy so the hard drive isn't moving around all over the place inside the laptop. We're going to line up the drive caddy with the SATA connectors inside the laptop. So it's going to go in face down like this. It's nice and tight, not coming out. And now all we do is put the hard drive bay cover back on. Slide the battery in. And that's it. One office slash school machine, ready to roll. I went ahead and lobbed Windows 10 on this machine just to show you guys that everything is working as intended. And when I did that, I realized that the hard drive we were using uh, in the hard drive adapter was actually dead. So I replaced it with a 90 gigabyte Kingspec drive that I had lying around. You can see the benchmarks from that right there. And that is working inside that hard drive adapter. So that is working as intended. And then we have the benchmarks from our 240 gigabyte operating system drive. Uh, you can see some CPU information right here. I forgot to mention this. I actually forgot this completely. Um, but I upgraded this a while back with a slightly more powerful Core 2 Duo um, just for a project and that's still in there. So this processor is just a little bit more powerful than the Core 2 Duo that this T400 originally shipped with. And then we have our 8 gigabytes of DDR3 recognized. Um, but it is running at 1066 because that is a limitation of the uh, T400. And just to prove to you guys that everything is 100% working as intended, I will run this through a uh, quick usability demo. Nothing crazy, just try to keep this under a minute. We'll visit a couple sites, open a couple applications, and then call it because uh, I think we are getting really, really close to that 15 minute mark. Um, and uh, I, I don't want to make this video super, super long, so... Just gonna visit a couple sites here. I'll we'll open in one or two applications and then we'll call it for this Lenovo T400 upgrade guide. So as you can see, going through sites here, even using something like uh, Edge, uh, websites are pretty responsive and I'll, I'll go back and actually scroll through them. I know I kind of jumped through them a little fast. Give it a mint to load. We just scroll through here, images are still loading and there we go, the page is 100% there. My website should be completely loaded. Scroll down here. Scrolling is nice and smooth. And the same thing for YouTube. And we'll run some multitasking as well. Move over here. Open up a word processor. Just go with WordPad. And of course, these systems run Linux distributions just as well. Um, it's just right now I have Windows 10 on this machine. But if you went with something like Ubuntu, um, you know, you would be just as well off. Open up File Manager. You can see both of our drives recognized right there. And that's going to be about it. So there you go. 
a pretty much complete upgrade guide, and I say pretty much because once again we didn't do the processor, but I think this is a pretty good route to go if you're not trying to spend a ton of money. So that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and put a comment down in the comments section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why so I can uh, make future ones better. And uh, of course, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. I will see you guys in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.